last hour. This is the initial lesson for the statistics unit. Um, I'm going to keep it fairly brief and just stick to the most basic elements that you need to know. So the first thing we need to have an awareness of is that there are various types of data that we can collect and apply statistical tests to. It, before we get to the types of data, uh, an important question you need to consider is why would we use statistics in the first place? Statistics allow us to be more scientific in the conclusions that we make. So they bring greater objectivity. Uh, sometimes it's very tempting to say that two or more things that we have counted in our geographical studies are connected. Um, and statistics allow us to test that, those conclusions. They remove bias from the conclusions that we have drawn. The second reason we use statistics is because they allow us to compress data. Sometimes we will collect very large amounts of data and it allows us, it allows us to um, make that data set manageable. The third reason we would use statistics is to make valid comparisons. Up until now in school, if you've been presented with a table of numbers or maybe two graphs and you're asked to compare them, the comparisons that you've made have been somewhat woolly. Uh, maybe you would say that one value was higher than another. Maybe you would go slightly further than that and you would calculate the range, that's the difference between highest and lowest values. But really, these comparisons don't, don't really tell us anything more than that one bar on one graph is higher than another bar on another graph. Statistics will allow us to tell us, will allow us to see if the comparisons that you spotted between two bars on a graph are significant. That's really important. It's all very well being able to say that one value is higher than another value, but is that difference a meaningful difference? And statistics allow us to determine that. Statistics allow us to use samples in place of populations. This is a little bit more um, niche, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, complex of concept. But put simply, it allows us to, where we have a very large data set, to extract a sample from within that data, data set and test it meaningfully. Again, making large amounts of data manageable. We can explore relationships with statistics. Connections between different data. Um, for example, um, on a scatter graph, you, in previously in your school experience, you will have seen scatter graphs, and you will have been able to say that there is or is not a relationship between um, the speed of the uh, of water and the um, roundness of the pebbles in the river, or something like that, and that would be shown by a, a positive or a negative correlation trend line on the, on the graph. Statistics allow us to test the strength of those relationships, to say exactly how strong the relationship between the speed of the water and the roundness of the pebbles is. Um, and that's really important. A kind of more cartoony way of understanding it is, let's say I draw a graph that shows the amount of donuts that I eat and my weight gain. Clearly there will be a relationship. However, there, may, there will be many other factors that influence my weight gain and therefore a statistical test will allow us to test the strength of the relationship where we only analyze weight gained and donuts eaten. You would probably find that it would be a relatively weak relationship would be a reasonable hypothesis because other factors would be involved. And statistics allows us to, um, to test the strength of a relationship. And finally, statistics allow us to, to predict the future. Where you have a graph that goes into, maybe the, it's a line graph that shows something changing over time, 
um, you can use statistics to say what will happen in the future on the graph. And clearly that's a very powerful tool. The skills you'll learn in this unit are really important. You will see statistics used on the news, in textbooks, you'll see experts on TV throw statistics around, um, you will see statistics throughout your entire adult lives. Being able to use them, understand them, and also understand how they have been calculated, at the very least at a theoretical level, is incredibly important. So in summary again, statistics allow us to be unbiased. Statistics allow us to make large data sets manageable. They allow us to make comparisons, but to measure the how meaningful a comparison is. And they allow us to explore relationships, analyzing the strength of a relationship between two variables. And they allow us to, to say what's going to happen in the future on a graph. OK, so types of data. That's the point of this initial lesson. There are four types of data. You need to know this language, so learn them please. The first thing I'll say is that ratio data is one that you may use a little bit less. It tends to get less coverage, but nonetheless I'll go through them all. Nominal data is name-based data. You can see the example that I've given. Name-based data, um, because it is not number-based data, uh, means that it's quite difficult to um, make comparisons or to spot trends in, and you cannot put it in order. You can't put oats, barley and potato into any kind of sensible order. So nominal data needs its own special set of statistical tests for us to work with it. I'd like you to be able to name a few examples of nominal data and to be comfortable doing that. Some examples that we could easily think about would be um, different makes and models of a vehicle as part of a traffic count perhaps. Um, other nominal data would include species types. So on a beach study, different plant species would be name-based data. More nominal data types could be found within a soil study where you're dealing with colours. You can't put brown, beige um, and red brown earths into any kind of sensible order and therefore um, they are nominal data. And they need their own set of statistical tests to deal with them. Ordinal data is the opposite of that. It is number-based and can be, most importantly, put in order into some kind of rank order. Rank ordering is when you put things in order of first place to last place. Again, I'll, I'll want you to be able to think of original ver uh, examples of this, but they're not difficult to come up with. Um, life expectancies. Ask yourself, could you put the life expectancies of um, different countries into order? Well, yes, you could. You, there is a first and a last place in terms of life expe average life expectancies between different countries. What about GNPs? A country's GNP compared to another country's GNP? Yes, you can put that into order. You can put it into a first to last place ranking system. Um, what about people's uh, heights? That would be another example. Now, uh, there's another um, example which I want to talk about, and that's interval data. Now, I just mentioned people's heights, and I did that deliberately because it is a little bit of a, a crossover. We also have interval data. Now, interval data, sometimes referred to as real data, is... Um, data that is collected um, on, a, on a scale. As you can see here, I've given millimetres as examples. Centimetres, millimetres, metres, kilometres. These would all be interval data measurements. Um, and they are measured on a scale. And they 
would not be easily ranked. If you really think about it, um, distances along a, a, a ruler, 22 millimeters, 13 millimeters, and 19 millimeters, there's not, I mean, there's not really a first place to them. At first you might think, hang on, isn't the 13 millimeters the first place value? And 22 millimeters the last place value? But actually, th there is no value attached to the number 13 millimeters. It is just a number on a scale. Um, so interval data is most likely going to be used on some kind of transect, a line that you draw maybe across a beach, maybe through a forest, maybe through a city, that allows us to uh, measure what is happening at certain distances along a transect line. And finally, that takes us to ratio data. Ratio data is real data, um, but it has what's known as a true zero. Now, um, as you can see here, I've got some percentages as an example. You can't get less than 0%, so it has a zero point. Um, so it's, it, that, that's the only difference between it and interval data. Um, an, example or, or, or an example of interval data that does not meet that requirement um, would be temperature, which can go below zero. Um, so once again, nominal data is easy. It's name-based data. It's something that doesn't have a numerical value and therefore can't easily be ranked. There's ordinal data, which is typically number-based, and uh, you can put into rank order. There's interval or real data, which is measured on some kind of scale. In terms of your usage, well, you're going to be using interval data on a transect line. Um, ordinal data would be any kind of number value that you can put into a rank order, and nominal data would be anything that you're counting based on its name. The three most important are nominal, ordinal, and interval. And what you need to have taken from the lessons you'll have had in class on this and from this presentation is simply being able to identify when you are collecting nominal, ordinal, or interval. Once again, interval typically is a measurement on some kind of line, some kind of scale. Ordinal is anything you're counting um, which has a numerical value that you can put into rank order and nominal is anything that's name-based. All right.